Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So today is going to be another gather round plan and prep video. We are going to be doing Connecting Continents Africa Unit Study. So this is actually the second Connecting Continents unit that we have done from Gather Round. We did Asia last year and absolutely loved it. I loved the introduction to world geography, the immersion into different cultures of different countries, and the overall broadening of horizons for my kids on their perspective of the world and the people who live in it. So let's just jump right in and talk all about Africa, how I am planning and preparing to do this unit study with my kids for the end of our first semester here in 2020. Okay, so the first thing I do when I am planning a new unit from Gather Round is I hop onto their website and purchase the unit. Here in our house, we buy the digital curriculum and I print it out here at home. So if you are new around here, I am the homeschool mom of five kids and they are ages 13, 11, seven, two and a half, and one. So I am homeschooling what I would consider a seventh, sixth, and first grader. So that means once I have purchased the curriculum, I will download it and spend some time printing all of the coordinating notebooking pages for my three students. So for my seventh and sixth grader, they are using the upper elementary page pages this time around and my first grader is doing the early reader pages. I also go ahead and print out a copy of the teacher's guide for myself. Now I know that there are some gather round mamas out there who like to use it digitally or cast it on a TV. I, I have tried that before and for us right now in this season of life having the physical book in front of us is just what's working best. So if you have watched any of my other gather around videos you know that I absolutely love my brother printer. I will make sure to link it down below if you are on the market and looking to invest in a printer for your homeschool I cannot recommend this one enough. Now full disclosure it is a little bit pricey the last I checked it was running just just over $300, maybe $350, but it's an ink tank style printer, so I've only had to change the ink on ours once in the last year. I print our unit on 24 pound paper. I print in color, double-sided. Okay, so let's just take a second to talk binding. First of all, for myself, for the teacher's guide, and for my older kids, my seventh and sixth graders, I have been using this Happy Planner binding disc system. This is the third unit that I have used and tried this binding system out on and, and so far I really, really like it for myself and for my older kids. What I love most about it is that you can very easily take a page out of your binding, you know, just like this and use it, move it around, whatever you need to do. And then when you are done, you can put it right back in. So the versatility of the binding system, the fact that I can tear pages out and put them back in, that has worked really, really well for myself and for my older kids. That being said, I would not recommend this binding system probably for kids under the age of 10, kids who are kind of hard on notebooks and paper and things like that. My first grader, this, this system did not work very well for her. She was constantly, you know, dropping or accidentally moving pages around in the system and it was just, it did not work well. So for my first grader this time around, I went ahead and just went back to basics. I just grabbed a white three ring binder for her that just has one of these clear pockets on the front. I actually picked up a huge pack of these at Costco over the summer. And so I just used a three hole punch and put all of her pages in here. Just, you know, very basic, very simple. One other thing that I should note is that I do laminate the front and back covers for my myself and for my older kids who are using the happy planner system this just makes it a little bit more durable and honestly I, I tend to spill coffee a good bit in our homeschool and I spilled coffee on one of my teacher guides once and just that lamination really protected it so I, I do spend just a few minutes to 
laminate the front and back covers. All in all, purchasing, printing, binding, laminating, I am able to do all of this in less than an hour. Now, this is not my first rodeo. We've done several units from Gather Round, so I, I think I am kind of becoming a well-oiled machine with it. So it, it may take you a little bit longer if this is your first unit, and if you have maybe more kids than I do or something like that. But I am typically able to get this done in less than an hour. Once I have everything printed and organized, I move on to my absolute favorite part of the planning and preparing process, brainstorming. I set aside a weekday afternoon while my kids are napping or maybe a little bit of time on the weekend and I sit down and I just really get familiar with the curriculum. I peruse the teacher's guide, I flip through each of the lessons in my kids' notebooks and just really get a feel for it. What we will be studying, what we will be covering, and what things maybe I can beef up a little bit or, or step back if necessary. This is a time when I will definitely utilize the teacher planning pages that are included in the teacher guide. Oh, they, are, they are just beautiful and they are so helpful for kind of organizing your thoughts about the unit. I will also hop on to the Gather Round app and Gather Round Facebook page just to kind of see what other Gather Round homeschool mamas have done with the unit what crafts they have done, what art projects they've tried, and what things have been really successful or fun for them. Last but not least, I will jump onto Pinterest and kind of get lost on there for a little bit of time and just look up different things about African unit studies and different homeschooling strategies that we could maybe use to just supplement or add to our unit. Now, all of that being said, I'm gonna be really honest with you guys. It is November when we are starting this African unit study. And I, I think like a lot of other homeschool families, by November, the newness of the school year has kind of rubbed off. I'm getting tired, the kids are getting tired, and we honestly are just wanting to get done with school and get ready for the holidays. We are keeping this unit very simple. I, I'm really trying to keep it as bare-boned as I possibly can. That, that has absolutely nothing to do with this unit or gather round in general. It is just a pattern that happens every single year in our home. By the time we hit January, we will all be excited and ready to hop back on board with homeschool again. But this is just a time of year where I just need to take a step back and, and try to simplify as much as I can. So you'll probably notice as I talk through the extra activities and things here in just a second that it's a little scaled back than some of my other videos. And honestly, that is why. Before we talk extra activities, let's do one of my favorite things and talk about books. I actually did this a little bit different this time around for this unit. In previous units, I have paired picture books and chapter books with every single lesson that is provided from Gather Round. So if there are 20 lessons, I will have 20, maybe 40 books to go along with that unit study. This time around, I decided to do it just a little bit different. I did use the Gather Round suggested reading list that comes in the teacher's guide. Oh guys, these lists are so good. I, I have found so many good ideas from these lists that Rebecca and Gather Round provides. So, so make sure you are utilizing those but I, I also added some titles of my own. So I have four different book baskets that I'm going to share with you today. First of all, I have a geography book basket. This is just a ton of books that I checked out from our local library that are devoted to all of the different countries that we will be studying in the African unit study. Sudan, South Africa, Egypt, Morocco, Madagascar, so there, I have a whole basket full of those type of books. But honestly, I think that you could skip this. I think that you would not need to have all of those different books devoted to each country. If you have just a really good atlas to share with your kids, that would be enough. And so I will go ahead and show the atlas that we use here in our house. And we will be using that as well as all of these picture books to talk through all of the different African geography. Kind of along that same vein, I am making an animal book basket for my kids. And the very first book that I am including in that is our animal encyclopedia. As you go through and study all of the different African countries, you are going to be studying different featured animals in the region 
And so I included our animal encyclopedia as well as a few African animal picture books for my kids to just peruse as we're learning about the different animals. The next stack of books or book baskets that I have to share with you are picture books. This is probably my favorite, just the fictional picture books that go along with the continent of Africa. Now, I did get some of these from our local library, but also I would definitely encourage you to consider purchasing some of these titles to just own in your house for years and years to come. I am very passionate about providing titles for my kids that give them views of different people, socioeconomic statuses, cultures, people groups, races. I, I just feel like, especially right now when so many kids are feeling closed off and stuck at home a lot, Lot of the time a book is such a wonderful thing that you can provide to your child that allows them to escape that allows them to go on an adventure and experience the world through someone else's eyes sorry I, I will get off of my soapbox but I, that is all just to say you could definitely check these titles out from your local library but I would encourage you to purchase a few of these just to have in your home on a regular basis the last stack of books I will share with you today are read alouds or chapter books. I use these to read aloud to my children every morning during our read aloud time during breakfast. I also encourage my older middle school kids to read these in the afternoon just for their free reading time. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do a quick flip through of all of these different book titles and then we're going to jump in and talk about extra activities. <laughs> talk about some extra activities I'm going to try to do with my toddler Ezra who is two and a half almost three now obviously at that age Ezra is not formally homeschooling not by a long shot but I do like to come up with a couple of fun crafts and activities for him to do when he is feeling up to it when he toddles in and he just wants to be a part of our homeschool day so in almost every unit that we have done from gather round I have shared with you guys that I have purchased these safari tube figures just these these little plastic figures that I will use to make some kind of sensory bend for Ezra this one is their wild animals series and it has like a gorilla and a camel hippo zebra that kind of thing I also just happened to find these at the craft store at Michael's when I was there for $2.99 just a little mini animal figures pack that had a lion and an elephant and some other things like that in it 
So I will take these figures and this time around I am planning on putting them in a bin of kinetic sand for him so that he can kind of play and pretend that we're, you know, we're talking about the Sahara Desert and he can just play with these little animals. The other item that I picked up for Ezra and I've purchased these before is one of the Melissa and Doug reusable sticker pads. This is really fun for him because it's not a one and done item. He can use it over and over and over again and it has five different scenes so he kind of feels like it's always new. We really have enjoyed these products and I, I think they run around five dollars for the whole thing. So this is really fun for top. Moving on to younger kids, whether it's preschool, kindergarten, early elementary, Mariah, my seven-year-old, I, I like to plan a few things fun for her. Now, she will definitely enjoy doing all of the same activities that Ezra is doing. She will jump in and do that sensory bin as well as some of those sticker pages. She is a hands-on learner. She, she will jump in and do all of that with Ezra. The main additional project that I am planning on tackling with her is a diorama. In one of the first lessons of the unit study, it asks her to create a desert diorama as you're studying the Sahara and they ask her to use sand and color a camel and some different things like that. Well, I decided to beef this project up a little bit for her and for my older kids, and I'm going to have her do an entire diorama for the entire unit. And as we learn about different animals, as we learn about different features of the continent, I'm just gonna have her continually add little by little to her little shoebox diorama. This is something fun. It will only take us, you know, maybe five minutes a day of some extra work, and by the end of the unit, she will have this nice big craft project. Now, this is a challenge for me. I am, I am not the crafty mom by nature, so this, this is a big project for me to take on, especially in November, but I think it will be really fun. Moving on to my middle schoolers. Like I said, they will also be creating a diorama. I'm going to have them work on that little by little every lesson in a shoebox. Now, since they are a good bit older than Mariah, my expectations of their models will, will definitely be higher. I, I'm expecting them to spend a good bit of time on these and really make it a project that they you know, are devoting a lot of time and energy to. Another activity that I'm going to ask them to do, and, and I might include Mariah on this, we'll see, is an African silhouette painting, kind of similar to what you see on the cover of the different guides. Just, you know, doing maybe some animals or trees, something like that that's really shadowy in silhouettes, and putting behind it either a sunrise or a sunset. I think that this would be really fun to do on canvases with acrylic paint, especially if we maybe have a nice afternoon with some sunshine and warmer temperatures, that might be something fun to do outside one afternoon. Okay, so let's talk YouTube videos, movies, screen time. I am really hoping to utilize a lot of YouTube videos with this Africa unit. I think especially with these connecting continents, the YouTube videos where your child can watch and really explore the different countries that they are studying about on the TV screen, I, I just think that that really makes the unit come to life for your kids. And so I am planning on, you know, jumping down those rabbit trails and watching YouTube videos about the different countries, about the different foods, about the different cultures every single day during lunch. We will definitely be doing a lot of YouTube videos. Now, in the evenings and on the weekends, I think we'll definitely do some more of like the cartoon style movies, Lion King, the Madagascar movies, Tarzan, and then probably a lot of animal documentaries, whether that is from Wild Kratts or Adventures with Jack Hanna or something like that. I I'm sure we're gonna watch a lot of animal movies. Well, I am planning on using the cookbook that Gather Round offers to go along with this unit study. I went ahead and purchased this. I, I didn't print it out. I think I'm just going to use it digitally. Now, we did use the Asia cookbook that went with the Asia unit last year, and it was so fun. We did a weekly meal based on some of the foods we were learning about. I'm just not feeling up to doing a once a week 
cooking session with the kids. So I think what we're going to do is at the end of the unit do one big celebratory dinner and make several different African dishes and just have a big African style dinner with the kids to celebrate. I'm also hoping to maybe supplement with just maybe a couple of fun snacks or drinks as we're studying different countries. For instance, maybe I will make each of them a cup of mint tea when we're studying Morocco or maybe make some coffee when we're studying Ethiopia. But I, I'm really gonna rein it in and keep it so, so simple. Okay guys, well, that is it. I told you I was gonna keep it shorter this time around. I was gonna try to keep it a little bit simpler. And so I, I will let you know how this goes. Just making this video for you guys today has made me so excited to jump into this Africa unit, has, has kind of re-energized this very tired November homeschool mama. So, so thank you for that. If you enjoyed today's video, as always, just please give it a thumbs up, like it below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. I do a lot of videos about Gather Round Homeschool as well as a lot of other homeschool and big family subjects. So just make sure you subscribe and stick around. And leave me a comment. Tell me if you're a Gather Round Homeschool family, what units you've enjoyed, and if you've done Africa. I, I would especially love to hear from you. Okay guys, well that wraps things up. I hope that you are having a great homeschool week with your kids. See you later.